Azia Bibi's family have been forced to go into hiding. Hardline religious groups in Pakistan, you know who I'm talking about, have forced Asia Bibi's family to go into hiding. The Guardian reports that the family of Bibi, she's the Christian woman who spent eight years on death row after being sentenced to death for saying something negative, allegedly, about Islam, uh, is now being hunted house to house by extremists in Pakistan. The family said that the extremists are traveling house to house with uh, photographs of the family in their hands in an attempt to find and expose them and do God knows what else to these poor innocent people. And her family have been in hiding ever since Bibi was acquitted by the Supreme Court, not ever since she was sentenced, ever since she was acquitted because people aren't happy that she's been acquitted and now might not die um, or at least not be killed by the government anyway. Uh, and now that Bibi is in uh, protective custody as well. Uh, and that's a deal between the Islamic Party and the government. So let's break this down into like, bare bones here. A Christian woman says something allegedly negative about Islam or Muhammad, but there's no evidence. Um, and even if there was, so what? Uh, her family, as a result, are now in hiding and terrified and scared for their own lives because they're Christians. And Bibi has to live in protective custody as part of a deal with the government. So not only is Bibi having to deal with extremism from regular people on the streets who are going house to house to try and find and potentially kill her family, but she's also facing the extremism of her own government. Amazing, isn't it? And so far, while some countries have indicated that they might be willing to give asylum to Izzy Bibi and her family, no solid offers have actually come through yet. And even if they did... Bibi isn't even allowed to leave the country. This is what's so messed up about this whole situation. Now, the Guardian reported on a guy called John Pontifex. Uh, he's from the Aid to the Church in Need UK, and he's been campaigning for Asia Bibi ever since 2010 when she was first sentenced. And he says that he's been in contact with the family for most days for the last few weeks. And he explained, The family have had to move from place to place to avoid detection. Sometimes they can only operate after sundown. They have had to cover their faces when they go out in public. They have had to remove the rosary that hangs from their car rear view mirror for fear of attack. And it's not even just the family. Even her lawyer has had to flee the country. Lucky for him, Bibi can't do the same because his life was in danger. These people are surrounded by extremists who want them dead. And yet the British government somehow thinks it's appropriate to continue giving this terrorist extremist state more than £460 million a year in taxpayers' money. That's a huge amount of foreign aid, and I think it has to stop. Now, Penny Morden, the uh, International Development Minister, has uh, indicated that she's planning on changing it. She wants to invest better in pa Pakistan through the private sector and things like that. But what I think will be better is if we stopped funding this extremist state entirely. Donald Trump just did it. Donald Trump just cut off 1.3 billion in aid to Pakistan. And they're groveling at his door trying to figure out, oh, what did we do wrong, Mr. Trump? What did we do wrong? So we need to do the same. It's time to get tough. These people, this government is terrorizing people by not taking action on what the extremists are doing on the street and is endangering people's lives by bringing cases like this to the front anyway. Why are people going to court? for daring to say something allegedly negative about Islam. If we get tough on Pakistan and tell them that this isn't acceptable, we will only ever cooperate with civilized nations that don't bar practice barbaric theocratic rule. If we tell them this, they're going to have to listen. If we cut off that 460 million quid a year, they are going to listen, especially combined with what Trump's done so far. And I think we can do it. I think we can pressure the government and Penny Mordaunt, the International Development Minister, to make a change. So please go to stopforeignaidtopakistan.com right now, sign the petition, share it with all your friends. I'm trying to get as many names as possible to show the British government that the people from all over the world even think it's time that we stopped giving money to this extremist terrorist state. They're hurting people, they're endangering people's lives, and they're not listening when the rest of the world tells them this is wrong. It's time to do something. So please sign the petition and also consider chipping in to our campaign fund. I want to commission a public opinion poll here in the UK to find out just how many Brits want to stop foreign aid to Pakistan. I suspect it's a lot of people. 
We've done this kind of campaign before and we'll do it again because they're really effective. So please consider signing the petition, donate if you can. I'll try and get that uh, billboard campaign going as well, if possible, if we raise enough, but we'll get that opinion poll out there. We'll pressure the British government and hopefully we can show Pakistan that the world wants them to end this theocratic rule, start treating people with respect and not put people's lives in danger. Thanks for your help. Sign the petition and chip in if you can at stopforeignaidtopakistan.com and let's tell Penny Mordaunt we don't want this terrorist state getting a single penny more of our taxes.